All right, Tim, we're back. We're talking frequency and microcycle design. Sorry about that if it was uh, too loud, but we're talking frequency and microcycle design. So hit us with it. Why is the uh, idea that we have a choice in the matter just a huge myth? Yeah, yeah. So one of the funnier conversations I have with someone is about what's your ideal split. You know, the how do you allocate your big patterns? Mm -hmm. uh, and just let's just use this as a working template: push, pull, hinge, and squat. Right. So an upper body push, an upper body pull, a lower body hinge, a lower body squat. So we have our lower and upper, and then it it, it splits into subcategories from there: horizontal and vertical for upper body push and pull, unilateral, bilateral for lower body push or squat, and then. You could really just say hip dominant, whether it's bilateral or unilateral, or you could break that up with hip dominant or knee dominant, again, bilateral and unilateral. So all that is kind of your big categories. It gets a little it's easier to categorize when you have a hip dominant posterior chain, because if you really think about it, the knee is a similar joint as the elbow. And then we look at that knee as a posterior chain developer, but an isolation joint. So just for simplicity's sake, if we're looking at organizing your training split, you could either go from a hip dominant. And then a squat dominant, which again is a knee dominant exercise, but still point being. Then we get into this conversation about what is your ideal training? Yeah, okay, I have to go upper lower. I'm a three day total body, or I have to go this mixed method and a push pull. All well and good, but really when you break it down, you probably have very little control over that, right? You get what you get and you don't get upset. And in a team sector, your coach, your Maybe your DFO, GM, they're just going to tell you what, how many days a week you can actually get the guys to train. And a private sector, you'll have a back and forth about what do you want? What are you willing to get it? And then it gets into this timeline and then you're okay. Well, if it's a big goal, very aspirational in a short time, frequency's got to match. And then it gets into the back and forth of time and then financial commitment. And then you have this back and forth. Generally speaking, it's going to play itself out. Probably the law of averages here at three. And when we get into this, I have a preferred training split. I'm an upper lower person. That's what I prefer. Majority of the time is going to fall down into a three day total body training split. It's just saying the law of averages. It's never going to be one. If it is, you should look to get another job. Never going to be six. And if it is, figure out what the hell to do in that time. And then figure out right in the middle, what do I do with a three day training program? And generally speaking, there's really only one way to do it. And that gets into a three-day total body. Now, there's exceptions. Sometimes it breaks up into, hey, I'm going to go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. That might lend itself to doing a lower upper total, or you can do a total upper lower, whatever the, the schematic of the week breaks out to be. But the, the truth is, is generally, we're going to probably have to utilize a three-day total body training split. Just is what it is. So mm -hmm. we now have an inventory of what is their biomechanics? You know, what can they do from a exercise standpoint? And then we did some sort of physiology assessment where we can go, okay, what is their capacity to handle density within a training session? So that is work to rest. So if we look at it, if I work a certain period of time, that offsets with a certain level of rest. And there's a couple of rules that intensity and rest are linear proportionate. So the higher the intensity, the longer the rest, the lower the intensity, the less the rest. But there's also goes a corresponding inverse and inversely proportionate volume or time of retention or duration to rest. So typically longer duration has less of a need for, for rest. And when we get into this conversation around density, you know, the exercises that we choose for that has a big impact. So if I want to do a high threshold, big, big external load type movement to really tap into the CNS, relative strength, power. There's certain exercises which are going to lend itself better to that than others, right? The ceiling or the governor that we have to place upon an exercise based off their ability to externally load or the capacity to externally load dictates a lot of the value we get from that, their, their exercise. But then it comes off with a caveat of what is the actual biomechanics that they can do, right? If they have a few spine, torn hip labrums, a femoral osteocabalum impingement, several other things, a low bar back squats probably off the card. So what do you do? How do you develop relative strength, power without having the capacity to do that? But that gets into this other thing of a lot of these exercises, when you really break them down, depending on how we do it, start to bleed over. And one of the keys that I talk a lot about with our staff is movement that muscles, but don't forget, we should feel certain things after a certain training session. So the muscles that are utilized during those movements are still important. 
And if I'm sore in my low back after doing a knee dominant quad exercise squat, something went really wrong. Yep. And then we start to look at this, the whole premise of a push, pull, hinge and squat platform is structural balance to allocate stress to specific areas so we don't become overdeveloped in one versus the other. And if we start to do exercise a certain way, or we have a limited capacity to do an exercise that stresses the tissues in the right and the correct manner, then we start to run into this problem of now I'm not going to be able to get the value from that structural balance of a three-day total body of a push, pull, hinge, and squat because I'm doing that exercise in a certain way and I'm ignoring a potential movement assessment that said I couldn't. And then you get into this next level of what is the actual ability to tolerate that stress within a training session or in a training week. And what I'm eventually getting to is we probably have very little actual control over the frequency we get with our athletes, but we have a lot of control over how we distribute exercises and then subsequently the variables, the sets, the reps, the time and attention, the intensity, and the rest within that, within that exercise, in that training session, within that training week. That is the keystone piece. So getting, all right, I got three days to work with these guys and I want to make sure that I'm hitting these big rock or these Pareto principle 80-20 type of movements, push, pull, hinge, and squats. I want to make sure that they're doing it a certain way that I'm going to allocate stress correctly along the actual muscular system to create this foundation of structural balance to understand that I'm training the right things, input equals output. And then over time, I can manage that stress because I'm essentially isolating, right? Essentially, I'm doing a tourniquet and I'm stopping any other distribution of stress or load anywhere else based off the way I mechanically align myself to target that specific area, tying into this bigger global thing of it's a squat pattern. And I want to make sure that squat pattern is training the correct things. But the... The biggest misconception though is, oh man, I'm a four day total body or four day upper lower person, or I'm a three day total body. No, you're not. You're not. I hope you're not. I hope you're more than that. And if you take offense to this, I don't care. If you're, oh man, that's not the ideal way to train. You're not living in the real world. Yeah. You're hammer and nail syndrome. And that's, that's a problem because you need to be flexible and malleable to what it is. And a great example of this, when I'm working at Georgia Tech, we used to do a three day total body program because Quite frankly, the practice field was a half a mile away. And yeah. if we're going to do any running on a lift day, let's say that we believe and advocate for a lower upper and we do sprint work on lower body days, it would take 30 minutes to get the whole team back over in the weight room to be able to do a lift on top of the run. So that meant we are going to do running on Tuesday, Thursday, and we're going to be a total body Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is that optimal? I don't know. Worked really well, but it doesn't really matter if we can't do it, right? So what's the point of arguing the fact of the matter. And that becomes the, the central theme. And for the, the gym I own, like we do essentially a three day total body with a, with an optional fourth day, which is more upper body and, and total body conditioning or circuit style conditioning. And the foundation is a three day total body, because that's what I want our folks to strive to get the 150 sessions a year. I want to make sure that they're not cherry picking upper body days or lower body days. I want to make sure that they're focusing on total body development and getting their big rocks throughout the course of the week and eating their ice cream on the weekend with their fourth optional day. That to me is the, the pinnacle of what I'm supposed to be able to do. And is that what I'm doing with all my clients? Absolutely not. If someone tells me they want to gain 20 pounds of lean muscle in eight weeks, I'm probably going to push them to go to four, maybe even five, six days. And I'm going to organize my training to match that. And that changes the dynamic altogether. But there's nuance. There's, there's a level of, of, introspection that we have to, all right, am I married to this solution without even knowing the problem? There's a conversation around, I've got two this week, but if I do a good job, maybe I can get three in, in eight weeks if I do a good job. And then I can get more money if it's a private training client, or I can have a direct bigger residual when I'm in the team sector. What is the, so coach tells you you can get X days in the weight room with the guys. What is the checklist for how you how you pick what you're going to do, how you decide to allocate that stress. Off season, in season, right? So most, most sports outside of football are going to be in this perennial state of in season. It just is what it is. It just, that's the dynamic we live in now. They're doing individuals, they're doing one-on-ones, they're doing pickup, they're doing everything all year. If they're a more baseball or golf type sport, striking sport, they can hit off a tee or do just 
practice all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that being said is you have to figure out what is their big days and having a conversation around, Hey, with that athlete, with that coach, with their position coach or skills coach, and what's our plan here? How are we attacking this week? Well, we want to get, we want to hit off the tee 10,000 times every single week, right? Whether that's just in our made up number, but let's say that's the goal. Well, what, what's, how are we distributing that? Are we going to go? We're going to go 1,000, 1,500 every single day, or are we going to go 5,000 on one day, take three days off, 3,000 for the day, and then 2,000 another day? How is this breaking up? And then I need to be malleable to fuck, to organize my training around that. Uh, and the same thing with we do at seven on seven in football or play a little practice. The same thing that we should do around basketball and pickup and where guys working individual or skills. There's all these dynamics that we need to account for with the sport that we're working with. And then we organize our training to meet. And it's just a simple conversation and talking to the players. And I'll tell you what, man, and the more you can have an open dialogue with the players, with the position coaches, the chances of you turning two to three goes up exponentially, right? It's just, they concern, they're concerned with my development as a player. They're not just trying to force me to lift. They're not as trying to make me into a glorified GA in the weight room. They're trying to make me a better player. And that creates more trust, rapport, and then subsequently value. So get that conversation around what's our week look? What's our week look off season, in season? Then what's the best day to put a pro, a workout in? And I'll be honest, a lot of time in football, we go, hey, two days is probably the sweet spot here. We got a lot of time on the field. Let's say that we're marathon practice team. Tuesday is a 24 period practice. Wednesday is a 24 period practice. Thursday is a 24 period practice. Though, if you don't know what that means, it's essentially three hours of practice with full pads. Best. You, no you experience yet. No. Yeah, and that's, well, that's, that's what the, the purist would say is just good football. You know, it's, you know, those who survive will be champions. But how do you organize a training session around that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you do a lower upper or a like something? And a lot of people will do a upper body only day during the week when they have three days sandwiched that. I choose to do a little bit lighter, but I still want to hit these big patterns because the more I'm further away from hitting a lower body push pattern, the harder it is to get the value from that when I do it heavier or when I need to have a bigger residual, right? So it's this. It's this, if it's important, do it every day. If it's, you need enough exposure throughout the calendar week to optimize the benefit from the big day, but also limit the residual fatigue or soreness on other days. So having this bandwidth to say that, like, I figure out something on these days that these guys are going to be pretty tired, pretty gassed and organize my frequency to adjust off season having a conversation around, do you want to get stronger? Do you want to get faster? Do you want to improve your body composition? that yes, we still need to practice. We still need to play. We still need to rehearse. We still need to go through these things. We're here to play football or basketball or baseball, et cetera. But you can't expect to have these great results without making at least some sort of concession on, we need to organize some of the practice around these big days that we have training and I'll be flexible on it. Right. And it could be as simple as toggling a lower body day on Tuesday, as opposed to Monday, cause that's our quote unquote big day with the do player practice, whatever the dynamic. But when we come back to it of communicating with the staff, communicating with the players, having a little bit of assertiveness, if you are the expert, they want you just to take the rein, be the, be the strength coach, but not being locked into this preordained solution that you know is not going to fit perfectly in every single thing and being malleable. And I, I, I could totally see a dynamic playing out where I'm going to do an upper, upper lower split, but Maybe just maybe that it turns into a big primary. Let's say I follow this, this rotating or tiered fashion of like I got my squat day, I got my bench day, I got my pull-up day and I got my hinge day. And then everything kind of works off of that where the other things have this governor and the supplemental. Is that really a full upper day when I'm doing extremely light remedial based stuff after my primary, just to organize my training so I can get good sprint work, good tempo runs. Good change of direction work, good plyometric work. Maybe I'm doing total body lifts, Olympic lifts. You know, that dynamic of, all right, this is an upper lower split, but I'm basically just doing a primary with a ton of remedial work off of that to optimize recovery. So I come back tomorrow and train hard again. And is that an upper lower split? Technically, is it just one big movement and a couple other exercises support it? Sure. 
And when we get into this total body, if I'm doing a rotation, a standing rotational chop, is that an upper or lower body lift? If I'm doing a snatch or a clean, is that a total body lift or an upper body or lower body lift? If I'm doing a swing, if I'm doing a med ball work, all this stuff is generating momentum from the ground up. It kind of gets into this hybrid role, which makes that upper or lower split a little bit more difficult to define and pin down. But to answer your question overtly, it's this having a conversation. What is the objective? What's the standards? What are we trying to accomplish? Engineering the week to facilitate the things that the coaches and players think they need to accomplish, but also getting what you need to get done as a strength and conditioning coach to perform and optimize, right? And there's all sorts of other variables of a guy coming off for surgery or an injury, return to play program. What is the ideal split for that based off of the days they're doing on the field work or doing rehabilitation work? Um, if I would tell your firsthand story of doing a four day upper or lower split and then a guy coming off an ACL six months doing treatment uh, and essentially doing as hard of a lower body workout as Ronnie Coleman could ever imagine um, in the training room. And the guys was slated to do reintroduction to a barbell work with me. And you look pretty beat up, man. And you explained to me what you're doing. I was like, all right, we need to go back to this conversation around what is, what is training? What is rehab? Because okay. this is a bad bodybuilding session and you've just screwed my, my split here and working with the athlete saying, all right, I got you. I'm not going to take away the time. I'll just rework the week, but having a conversation with the physical therapist and athletic trainer around, are you going to do that workout again? One, we should have a conversation around why that's so dumb. You basically did 600 reps of lower body, primarily anterior lower body pushing. I struggle with that. Then the other end of it is it just completely compromised and sacrificed the rest of the week for me. I can't do anything with that kid now because he's so beat up. Um, what was the logic here? But on the other end of it, if, all right, we all agree that a violent attack on VMO and quad coming off ACL post-operative situation, all right, I got to adjust my training. We're just going to do a five-day workout with really minimal stuff in the anterior parts. So maybe I just attack both to your chain and just I'm going more bodybuilding, five-day body part split. I, I got to be the one who has to work within my environment because I'm the one who's burdened with knowledge of the inherent risk and limitations of certain myopic views of training and splits, but also to the downstream effects of if I can just manage this and toggle this and organize this correctly, man, I'm going to have a really good result by just being strategic and leveraging what's necessary in that moment. Now, do you typically just try to keep it out? There's five days in a school week, a work week, we're going to cap it at a five day micro, or will you ever extend that micro or even maybe even looking at micro dosing over, you know, those 20 minute sessions? How do you, how do you do those things? Micro dosing, micro results. I'm macro dose everything. <laughs> sure. Sorry if anybody was a fan of micro dosing out there. Minimal effective dose of lame, in my opinion, maximal intended benefit is what I prefer to use. So it is uh, always better. Yes. Yes. Real world scenario is we all are working within a five day work week, right? Scheduling wise, it's okay to say, I don't want to come in on a weekend. I'm okay with you know, Me either. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine. I'm, I mean, shoot, I know a lot of professional athletes are saying you got four days to get this done, figure it out. You're not touching my third, my Thursday night through Monday morning. And you might get me on Tuesday morning if uh, things go right for them. So there's that dynamic of essentially we're working within these blocks of, of work. And what I would look at it, and I think the, a good metaphor of this and is this idea of from a macro cycle perspective, we have these discretionary weeks in college football. We have non-contact periods and professional football. These are periods of forced rest, right? Which maybe you do something, maybe you don't. If I'm good at what I'm doing in the time that I got, that discretionary or non-contact plays itself out nicely from creating the restoration and recovery into what I, what I need to be for the long haul. And the same thing within the micro cycle, we just, it's fractal, right? So we just consolidate that macro annual into a, a week. And I kind of got Thursday, I don't got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So my work week is Monday through Thursday. And I'm going to get the most out of it. And I'm going to tell them these are going to be four hard days. I just need really locked in focus from peri-workout nutrition and then expanding that out to nutrition before someone a little bit afterwards and then way after, and then working through the lifestyle, sleep, hydration, being mindful, being, getting off your feet, really managing your stress load in these four really concentrated days. 
and just having a conversation. Do you really want to get great results? Or is this something that you're just checking the box? And you know, they'll always tell you, I really want to get great results. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Okay, well, you gave me some pretty hard constraints here in terms of I can't do anything three out of the seven days of a week, although like a four to six, four to eight week period. So essentially you're in a four week period, you're giving me 16 days to do my job. How do I get the most from it? And all right, well, it might mean I'm just going to backload my, my rest and my recovery. And within that micro cycle of four days of work, I got to be really strategic. Of, all right, I'm going to push to the upper limit. I'm going to utilize all the lifestyle, nutrition, supplementation I possibly can. But on the other end of it is I got to organize this from one day to the next to op optimize. And it could just be what I call siloing off or quadrant in your body. All right, I have this upper and lower quadrant. I'm just going to allocate stress there. And I want to be very bifurcated with nothing below the waist um, on upper body days and nothing above the waist on lower body days. So I can be very strategic, could be more of a unilateral bilateral approach, could be more of a push pull, but I got to be very strategic with how I allocate that stress. And then it gets a little bit muddier when we go, we're never just lifting with athletes. And if you are, you're probably missing a really good opportunity to develop full athleticism and having correspondence to what they're doing. So you're going to be sprinting. You're going to be doing maybe some max speed tempo work. You're going to be doing some plyometrics. You're going to do some change direction, power cut, speed cutting. You're going to be doing Olympic lifts or total body power movement, trap bar jumps or med ball throws. You're going to be doing this stuff that doesn't fit nice and neat into these boxes of upper and lower. So figuring out ways to organize that, that doesn't hinder or limit performance. But another thought experiment of, hey, I got a five day work week. I only work Monday through Friday. would be, what if you just break it out two weeks? What would you do if you had two weeks within a microcycle? Like, there's nothing saying it has to be seven days. It could be a four day, 14 day period or a 10 day period. And you go, okay, we're going to work Monday to the following Wednesday. How would I organize my training and that there? Maybe I do. Essentially these six different workout structures within that micro cycle and repeat the next 10 days. So I'll go upper one, lo lower one, upper two, lower two, upper three, upper three, a lower three. And then I repeat that the following Thursday. And then I have Friday and we have these every third day, a day off, that kind of thing. There's all sorts of ways you can really navigate this. And it's just a matter of what is the constraint your athlete or coach are giving you. And if you can manage that if they say hey you got me i'm fully committed to this nothing's touching me for the next eight weeks all right how weird can we get with it and why would you do a 10-day micro cycle or 14-day micro cycle because i feel we need more variation within this micro cycle with this set rep time under tension intensity and rest protocol right that this person needs to put on a lot of lean muscle mass but they get very overloaded with these patterns quickly so I want to distribute that across multiple planes and vectors. I want to distribute that across multiple origin insertion points. I want to distribute that across maybe exercises that are going to be more mechanically advantaged or disadvantaged. And I want to get more, more variation within the micro cycle. So that just stretches out my micro cycle or maybe not. Maybe I go, Hey, we're going to do a, we're going to do a five day micro cycle and it's going to go lower upper total. So I go lower upper rest, total rest and then repeat. Maybe I do that. And. My point of all this, Corey, would be there's so much opportunity when <laughs> you start to explore and reach and organize. That's why, why I said at the onset, this is for me, a very fun and interesting topic. And I love it because it, it's just problem solving. It's putting together a good puzzle, right? I know what I'm working with from an exercise kind of platform and variable standpoint from doing our evaluation we talked about last week. I know what I have to do in terms of the frequency and the, and the micro cycle I'm working with or the window that I'm working with, how do I organize it? And it, again, it could get, it can get so weird and so beautifully nuanced that it's just endless and infinite in number of possibilities you can do, but you gave me some constraints and now I'm going to organize it. Hey, can we go two sessions on Monday and then one on Tuesday recovery or, or just a GPP, have fun, do whatever you want, go rollerblading day on, on Wednesday and Thursday, we come back and hit a, a sprint workout and then a total body workout. I can do that. All right, cool. So we're going to get five sessions in four days. But that's okay. Yeah. And I've done that for the record. And definitely keeps you on your toes as a coach because you come very, very built around the routine 
of oh, 9 a.m. I got this guy coming in and we're going to be doing this or below split and we're going to keep the same cadence of what we're doing from set rep intensity, time and retention and rest from one day to the next. So I'm not thinking a whole lot about, oh, it's five by eight with a four exo tempo with 90 seconds of rest between A1, A2 and then A2 back to A1. Like versus you get a very big, confusing micro cycle. You have to explain it. You have to walk through it. Why are we doing this? Why are we have a little bit different from one day to the next? All that stuff becomes, I think, incredibly interesting. And if you're going to ask me what my favorite segment of periodization training session design is, it is what it is. I feel it's, it's something of a fractal relationship with the quality we're trying to develop from a macro cycle, you know, the outcome. So there's, I tend to, I tend to defer to block because I'll to, I'll to saturate certain things to see the cause and effect relationship, relatively speaking to the outcome I'm trying to get, but the micro cycle is, man. When I'm thinking about, and it's even now I've gotten so much remote clients and the thing I first tell them to do is you aren't locked in to a group fitness model. If you want to go to a workout on Saturday, you can do it. If you want to do two sessions on Monday, you can do it. Just, just one thing I'll ask if I'm going to write it, I want you to be able to follow through with it. So if you can't, let me know, yeah. yeah, can't do it. That's okay. Tell me your schedule. What's ideal? Ah, oh, man, Wednesday suck for me. I was using my airing day. Let's not work out. Why, why I want to get this? I want to get five days. What doesn't have to be this. Well, what would we do if we did Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Let's, let's unpack this. What do we want to accomplish? I want to put on more muscle. Okay. Well, that means we're going to get maybe an upper lower on Monday and Tuesday. Maybe we get a, a little bit of GBP conditioning on Thursday and we do back to upper lower on Thursday or Friday, Saturday. I don't know. We'll, let's play it out. Or I don't have access to the gym that I, I want to do on upper body days on, on Thursday. Can we switch it out for Saturday? Sure. You know, that, that's the fun part for me. It's just like the organization and some of the ones I've been playing around with, of someone wants to put on more muscle and which generally speaking, they just want to look better with their shirt off. Right. Yeah. When an adult male tells me they want to, they want to put on muscle. It's, it's largely above the waist mm -hmm. and that's how much can I get a certain amount of frequency without compromising their recovery. And one of the things that I've been playing around with is a five day split of upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, and organizing that of doing a structural balance assessment. So if they're weak in terms of their pulling to pushing ratio, I do the bookends of the week of pulling. So maybe a vertical pull on Monday and a horizontal pull on Friday mm -hmm. and, and whatever I feel they need from a structural balance slash development. Chances are it's probably going to be something more horizontal in nature to develop pack. But if I just love some vertical pressing, we'll just put that as our primary on Wednesday. And then I'll do the same thing for their structural balance on their lower body, but I'll just spread it out between Tuesday and Thursday. And that split's been going off like gangbusters. The boys are loving it. And I'm, it's, it's kind of a little hearkening back to a body part split, but there's also an element of it's still movement oriented and I'm categorizing my push, pull, hinge and squat, and I'm basing it off their structural balance. And. Again, there's a five day work week there. So I got to figure out what's their, what's their fitness, what's their readiness, what's their blood pressure, resting heart rate, what's their heart rate recovery from their fitness, all these things. Cause if I'm going to do a very high density, high volume, high frequency strategy, and they're not physiologically ready to do it, it's probably going to break well, down or I could just adjust the micro cycle or the mesocycle length. Right. So I get into this next level of, all right, this is a pretty aggressive approach. I got to be more rapid with the change of that micro cycle. So I might change every two weeks now instead of four or five. Yeah. Wow. That was awesome. You crushed it. I, I really got that micro design. You just, you just laid out. That was really good. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I'm I writing it. it. I'm, oh, I might need to do this, man. Just, yeah. you know, this is what, this is the money. This is the money. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go on that split now. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's. And, and call out the Tim Karen proprietary split right there. It's, 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 it's a camera first, folks. It's the Karen split. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's good. It's, you set up that perfect blend of body style, body lit or, you know, bodybuilding. And then you, you know, you take it back to the structural balance, man, you fire. I, I'm the same way. I, I get fired up about this stuff. You know, it's a puzzle. It's so much fun. Yeah. And, but, but to the point of working with you as an offensive lineman, Hey, we got to keep putting muscle mass on you guys. We're going to keep you running. I go back to that a lot. I probably do maybe that, but invert lower and upper. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there might be yeah, no idea. You know, yeah. and so I can get more frequency and exposure. So mm -hmm. that's essentially where I've been pushing towards lately. Yeah, that was, that, that was awesome. I love it. Thanks, Tim. This is great. Appreciate you, Corey.